Hello my fellow FNAF fans! So today, we are going into a blast to the past to answer a question that nobody, to my knowledge, truly fleshed out and how it works into the overall story of the games, a clear picture of how things were intended to go. Today, we are going to answer the question many people still have. What the heck do the FNAF 3 minigames truly mean? Now while many people claim to have the answer, many people could not truly explain what these minigames actually mean and what they really have to do with the series of the games. So that is what this video is, to try and fully explain these minigames and their intent in the series. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get right into it. So the first question we should ask is, what exactly is the purpose of these minigames? I mean, they seem so random, right? At least in the FNAF 3 when the entire game up to this point was literally sitting in a FNAF style haunted pizzeria attraction. So when we eventually do play them, they feel extremely out of place, especially when to access them is literally clicking on a balloon boy poster and punching in wall tiles. However, now with a bunch of context to what these minigames mean, we have a complete story on how they warrant the good ending. To answer the first question, the point of these minigames are to free the spirits, or quote unquote, more on that later, of deceased children killed by Afton. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Isn't that happening at the end of the game, when all the children springlock Afton and the spirits fade? Well, the answer is no. See, in order to get the good ending, you need to complete Happiest Day, and the only way to do that is to give cake to all the children in the previous arcade games. Therefore, in order for a canonical ending of freeing all the children and getting their spirits free, you need to complete these minigames. But why? Why do these minigames free the spirits of the children? Well, one simple answer. Positive emotions. When you get to the ending of FNAF 6, along with Discovery and the Insanity ending, you find out Henry's entire plan was to trap the remaining animatronics and burn them, therefore neutralizing the remnant and causing final obliteration of all the remaining animatronics. However, as we have gone over time and time again, the fire did not work. Every animatronic in the fire seems to be back in some way. The puppet is back in the Nightmare On animatronics, Molten Freddy seems to be back in the blob, Recently confirmed by the character encyclopedia, Afton seems to be back in two forms, those being Glitch Trap and Burn Trap, and Baby, well, you can watch my other video for that one. So what went wrong? Why didn't the animatronics die in the fire? One simple answer, Remnant doesn't neutralize in fire. If you really think about it, how does spiritual soul metal become neutralized in fire? It really does not make sense. And even if it was the case, why didn't it work in the FNAF 3 fire? Clearly, William had Remnant stored both running in his veins and in the back room of the first FNAF location that caused him to stay immortal. But as it has been established, there was only one form of Remnant that has been shown to cause immortality. Agony. When Agony is in the form of Remnant, it is the reason why William stays immortal. This is the entire reason of why he decided to murder kids in the first place. It was because he knew that the agony of the children being killed would give him the ability to stay immortal. Now, many people may be wondering where I may be going with this, because it seems as though this doesn't have any connection to the minigames or setting the children free at all. However, everything that I have established prove, proves one thing. In order to neutralize Remnant in the form of Agony, it must be cancelled out by positive emotions. This leads back to the minigames. How are the children in these minigames being set free? The appearance of Cake. Having a party they so desperately wanted, but instead got lured and murdered by William Afton. So this leads to the second question. What form are the children taking on? Are these games metaphorical for real events in the series, or are they happening inside of the minigames themselves? The answer is both. The souls are being set free due to the positive emotions, resulting them in the ability to be set free in their real events. When cake is given to the children, their souls result in being able to be set free. As we learn from Remnant in the past, Remnant are memories inside of metal, mixing the intangible with the tangible, as said in the epilogue of the last Fazbear's Frights book. This means that every single child inside one of these minigames isn't an actual spirit, it's rather a memory that was formed upon death. A painful one. One made from agony. 
Therefore, if the agony is not released in the minigames, the children will not be able to have rest, therefore not being able to have the good ending, because even when Afton is dead, which regardless of when it happens, it will happen eventually, the agony of the children will never be put to rest. It will continue to remain in the minigames until eternity. So this brings us to the third question. Who releases the spirits of the children? Is it Michael in FNAF 3? Well, no. When the children eventually do get released, it's far later in the series. These minigames are having the children released before, during, or after Help Wanted. Regardless of when it happens, it must be after the FNAF 6 final monologue, and there are multiple reasons why this is the case. The first is that Glitchtrap is present in every single one of these minigames. We know this thanks to the last minigame, where a purple glitching bunny is able to glitch through every single minigame. And to say this isn't Glitch Trap is just foolish. People argue that the Help Wanted game portrays Glitch Trap as the bunny from the poster in FNAF's Security Breach. However, this is a negligible, negligible piece of evidence because Princess Quest, which is also in complete possession of by Glitch Trap, has purple glitching bunnies that look very similar to the one in the FNAF 3 minigame. This means that Glitch Trap can glitch through each minigame, which is also the reason why these minigames are broken and allow you to leave the boundaries of the games in the first place. The second is that it only makes sense timeline-wise. For those who don't know, the Funtime animatronics are made out of experiments William made on the FNAF 1 animatronics and the minigames between the nights in FNAF 3. So this way, whenever the Funtime animatronics eventually become Molten Freddy, the children's spirits are still alive. Now, when we look at the character encyclopedia and go to Molten Frenny, one of his listed appearances are FNAF Security Breach. This outright confirms that Molten Freddy is, indeed, the Blob. So, this means that in order for the good ending to happen, the children's spirits must be released, but by the time of Security Breach, their spirits are still in the Blob, meaning that they have not been released yet. This implies that freeing of the children's spirits in the minigames, at least, must happen after the FNAF 6 fire. Granted, the children in these minigames may very well not be the same children as in the Blob, but even then, this doesn't matter because the 16 balloons and happiest day of because of the 16 balloons and happiest day. This requires all the children to be released at the same time, so they very likely are indeed in the blob. And no, this does not conflict with my earlier statement about the souls being in the minigames because, again, they are the memories of children, uh, an agonizing memory, that must be released in order for the spirit to truly be set free. So the answer is no, Michael does not release the children. But who does? Well, it's Charlie. Not only does the positive emotion take the agony of the children to happiest day in which they are set free, but there is a giant silhouette of her in the games anyway. Have you ever looked at the glitch in Mangle's quest and thought, hmm, what is that? Well, clearly it's the puppet. Striped legs, slim body, and tear tracks. Three of the puppet's most prominent features. Not only that, but the mask of the silhouette looks almost identical to the puppet mask in Happiest Day. This means that every string that is being pulled by the animatronics are being controlled by the puppet herself to get them to Happiest Day minigame. And it's really ironic that a character named the puppet is the one pulling the streams. Trust me, that is not a coincidence. Now, there's f one final question that must be answered here. Who the heck are the spirits that are being released? Well, it's very simple. It's the original MCI, along with every other one of William Apton's murders. How do we know this? Well, it's simple. In Happiest Day, there are 16 balloons, representing one of William Apton's murders. This means that William murdered 16 children, and if you want to check out all the possibilities those children are, you can check out this video that I did a little while ago dissecting that. However, what many people don't know is that you can visit Happiest Day before you have done all the other minigames, and every single time you do a minigame, one of the four children will appear. The only way for Happiest Day to be completed is if all the spirits come in Happiest Day, the Happiest Day minigame. So this means we can figure out which victim is from which minigame. The BB's Air Adventure Kid is Gabriel, the Chica's Party World Kid is Susie, obviously, the Stage 01 Kid is Fritz, and the Glitching Bonnie minigame is Jeremy, that, the one that becomes Bonnie. Now, 
It is weird that Glitchtrap is freeing Jer Jeremy, yes, but as I said earlier, it could very well be under the puppet's manipulation, and the only way to get Fritz is by going deeper in the code. Yes, I know it's a stretch, but it's also very possible. With information from Happy Stay as well, it's clear that the puppet has also gathered the Save Them Children as well, since the scrapping of the animatronic does not destroy the agony either. However, this was likely easier for the puppet, since she was in the same location as when the Save Them Children were scrapped. So, with all of this being collected, this answers the ultimate question. What do the FNAF 3 minigames truly mean, and what is their impact on the series? Well, with the help of the puppet, the MCI children, along with the Save Them children, they must be released so the series can end. Due to the minigames being dug up in the archives, the puppet has a chance to be able to release the spirits once the blob is defeated. Since the glitch trap virus is not dead yet, she can use it to go deeper into co the code to re re retrieve all four MCI children to gather them into the simulated birthday party for one child, the Bite Victim. Due to the appearance of the Bite Victim in the character encyclopedia, the Happiest Day minigame was made for the Bite Victim himself. As we can see in the FNAF Survival Logbook, Cassidy says it herself, the party was for you. This allows the puppet to gather one final birthday party for the Bite Victim and all the other five children to release their souls once and for all. Side note, this must mean that Happiest Day would happen after the Ruined DLC if my prediction of the blob being destroyed is correct. But anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary on the nature of the minigames from FNAF 3 and how it fits with the overall story of the games. More videos are coming soon since I plan to read some Mechanophobia soon and I should be getting around to it pretty soon. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, peace out.